Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Colin and Greg Live right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. My name is Colin Moriarty. This is Greg Miller. Kevin Coelho off screen. Did a little first, first down sign there. First down. Kevin Coelho off Kevin screen. Coelho. Kevin Coelho off screen. Hope everyone's well. Kevin, how do you feel today? Fucking. Use your camera. Devastated. Use your camera. This is going to be a heavy camera episode for you, Kevin. Devastated. <laughs> I mean, there's really not that much to talk about. Shit went badly. Very, very badly. So. Well, for you, I guess. For the country. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll see. We have no idea what this lunatic opinions are on things. So, cool. Okay. Greg? What? How do you, how do you feel? <laughs> oh, terrible. You look like you just crawled out of a train car with your beard. Oh, you like that? The hobo beard? Yeah. yeah. Kevin, give me a hobo beard, Cam. Go to, go to Skycam. We'll do the Skycam check-in every day until I cut it. <laughs> Looks Hi. good. You're, yeah? ter you're terrifying. Yeah? You're a little scary. Ugh. Maybe that's what you need now. That's what you like, America. <laughs> uh, I wore the shirt today to remind you that it didn't have to be this way. Yeah, where were you? Mitt? Uh, this could have been your year, Mitt. The, the big lesson... Uh, so... Let's, let's talk. We'll have a conversation. We'll get into the chat. You can tip us if you have something pertinent to say. Uh, we'll have a dialogue, the three of us here in the studio. Um, for people that don't know, obviously, you must be under a rock. I think you all know Donald Trump will be, is the president-elect, will be the president of the United States, the 45th president of the United States. Um, now, this is surprising, but not that surprising. Um, I did predict on Twitter a few days ago with my map that Clinton would win. I said it would be very close. I predicted the popular vote would be about 48 to 46. Percent, and I said that the electoral college would be way closer than people were saying it would be. I, I gave Trump, uh, I gave Trump Ohio, I gave Trump Florida. He ended up winning those. He also won North Carolina. The crazy thing about it is he won Wisconsin, which wasn't even in play. He won Michigan. He obviously is, won Pennsylvania, which is fucking insane. Pennsylvania hasn't voted for a Republican since George Bush, the first one. Um, they always call that fool's gold in politics and Republican politics. That we think we can go in there and nullify the Philadelphia vote by going to the rest of the state. It worked. Philadelphia voted something like 500,000 plus over Trump's vote, and they still lost the state. Um, the geographic diversity of the win surprised me. Yeah. Um, and uh, the layout of who voted for what. Trump won college-educated white people. Trump won, in most states, women. Uh, he only lost college-educated women by the, in the country by five points. He did better with Latinos than Romney, which is insane. When you think about it, just insane considering the narrative about about him with mm -hmm. Latino mm -hmm. voters, obviously coming right off the bat with some pretty, the wall, yeah, with the, the he rapist. Won, he, he, he didn't win, but he did better with Romney. If Romney had those numbers, it would have been a way more competitive race in two thousand four. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the prognostication uh, was wrong. Uh, the polls were wrong, and I warned you guys about this. I fucking warned you. I warned you, and and a lot of people dismissed it. I, what did I say on the Game Over? What did I say on the Game Over Greggy show? The polling is skewed. There are a ton of secret Trump voters, you know, and you cannot take your foot off the gas. And what happened? What happened with Clinton? With Clinton supporters and with voters, you took your foot off the gas. You started talking about how much you can run up the, the score instead of just winning. You talked about how you might take the Senate back and the House, which is incredible. No, no, you're never going to take the House back. You know, you complacency. Almost 50% of the of, of uh, applicable voters didn't even vote. Yes, yeah, I and, and you took your foot off the gas. And you fucking lost. You know? I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the way it happened. And it wasn't like a southern coup. It wasn't like... There's a pretty broad electorate that voted Trump. You know, like it's it's just it's just what I was surprised yeah. is of all your prognostication, all your speech, all the talk, you know what I mean? Like you you were pretty sure it seemed like Clinton was gonna win. What I'm surprised is that what you said came true, but in reverse. Where you talked about you for leading into this, you kept talking about how, holy shit, what if the Republican Party just had a likable candidate? They would clown out Hillary Clinton, they would do all these different things, when in reality, when you get to the polls, it happened the other way around. What if the Democrats would have had one likable, not 
email, not Benghazi, <clears throat> not whatever, not all the baggage of her husband candidate. You know what I mean? What if Joe Biden, what if smiling Joe Biden ran? Joe Biden would have destroyed Trump. Now, that, that's the big thing. That's why I tweeted, my tweet was actually on BBC. Uh, about, oh about, 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 some tweet is here from the Americas. About Joe Biden. The colonies are on fire again. That there must be some sleepless nights going on with some people that could have gotten involved. Mitt Romney being one of them, but also, <laughs> um, who would have won. But also, I think uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren to a degree. Bernie Sanders, certainly, who was basically robbed by the DNC, but I also think he would have lost to Trump. And then, I mean, there's a lot, of talk, I mean, I've said it before, a ton of delusion about, about Bernie Sanders. But the, the man that really could have won is Biden. And yeah. I think that um, he is probably full of regret for not getting involved. He would have won the primary and he would have beaten Trump. Now, because he n- nullifies and negates the working class, Scranton, blue collar, Thing because that's what he is. That's Are who you he was. Are you aware he rode the train door? I, I I was aware of that. Now I think that uh, if you take that all into account, um, you have something really interesting because I watched the circus on Showtime, which I've been I've been suggesting you guys, uh, Mark Halpern, etc. Um, you know this really great show on Showtime about politics that's that was following the election very closely, and it's a really great show. And they had Biden on two weeks ago, mm. and you could see it. I was I was actually texting back and forth with Ramon because he's Ramon. a big fan of that show. Where I'm like, you could see in in Biden's face the fucking regret, the sadness that like he sees the the complexion of the race and realizes he, he would have won. From himself. Yeah, and it's just too late. And I, I, I respect and appreciate, you know, he got really emotional. A lot of the episode was about time where he's like, you know, Bo Biden, his son, wanted him to run. He just wasn't there. He's like, I need to be there. And, time, and didn't his son die or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Bo Biden died of cancer and, and or I think a brain tumor of some sort, brain cancer or something. Um, and uh, he was talking a little bit about uh, how you have to be in it. And he just wasn't there. in it. His heart wasn't like regardless in it. of like the, the the optics or the the realities. Like he just didn't want it. Yeah. And, um, and you don't want that job. If you don't yeah. Want that job. Yeah. Exactly. And so you know, I I I, I really do empathize with with uh, Biden on multiple levels. Not only because of his loss. I mean, he's this man has experienced profound loss in his life, but uh, loss of kids, loss of his first wife. I mean, it's a terrible thing. But also seeing that fleeting moment where he ran in 1988. You know, obviously he he ran against Dukakis in the primary. He. Um, he was accused of plagiarism and all this stuff. He had to drop out, and then he came back in 2008 and you know said some stupid shit right off the bat and was basically out. But then, with, but then Obama, you know, sure. picked them to kind of secure that working class. You know, he was having problems with working class white people, and he needed needed a touchstone. So, I uh, so I am I am a little bit sad about about that for him because I I, I would have actually voted for Joe Biden. You like Joe Biden? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think Joe Biden's a perfectly reasonable, perfectly moderate person. What I want to talk to you guys about here in the studio, and then and we can get some we can get some input from the audience is is this the one thing that I think is lost uh, amongst many things. Well, there's multiple things that I think are lost, but the one major thing is people refuse to look at a specific element of this election, which is that no one likes Hillary Clinton. If you needed any more evidence, if you needed any more evidence that America hates the Clintons, doesn't want to see them anymore, then look at the election. Donald Trump, by all accounts, should have lost by 20 points, right? Like, he he had no business winning almost any state when you consider the things he said and the things he's done. People hate Hillary Clinton so much, that they and they hate the establishment so much and what it represents, and they hate the Capitol and they hate everyone in it, that they're like, we don't give a fuck. We're going to elect him anyway because we fucking hate you, you know? And that that is the outcome, so when everyone's pointing fingers at everyone and pointing out the ignorant asshole Trump voters, and we'll get into that in a minute, and also about the, the, the third party voters as if people that voted for Gary Johnson were going to vote for Hillary Clinton. The delusion there is quite real. Then uh, you have this problem where people just don't look at their own house and the house that they built. You elected this woman. No one likes her. No one trusts her. She's looked at as corrupt. She's looked at as dishonest. And when the polling, the exit polling showed that people thought that she is more dishonest than Trump. That's all you need to know. Nate Silver was right the entire time. These people that at Huffington Post and all these liberal outlets that had 98, 99% chances of, of, of Clinton winning. And Nate Silver's like, wait a minute. For an, uh, the last week, he's like, wait a minute. She has about a two-thirds chance of winning, but you guys are insane if you think she, she has a 90, 95, 98% chance of winning. You're wrong. You know? And lo and behold... It's a very interesting outcome. So, Kevin, what do you have to say? 
<laughs> I mean, just why is she so hated? It's a great question. Why? What what email came out that proved that she was such a fucking monster? I don't know that it's I the mean, emails. Th- th- no, but I mean, hey, that's what you said last week. Well, that, last that's, week, that's that's she was fucked. That was last week. She was gonna get indicted and arrested. I hope what what, what email? Indicted. Nothing. Nothing's gonna happen, <laughs> Colin. We can laugh about it. But there's no email out there that proves that she's a fucking criminal. Well, we she don't, didn't murder anyone. I, don't, I never said she murdered anyone. I'm not one of those when, conspiracy when, theorists. When Nick walked in here and said that, you didn't disagree with him. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I never said that, though. I don't agree with the, that. The reason why That's a ridiculous she thing. did so poorly is because all these lies have been spread. And everyone can rip me apart and say, oh, they're not lies. The truth is, she hasn't gone to jail for anything. She's not a criminal. Last week when you, sh- you said she was a criminal, that was a lie. So yeah, when people are told your option is some fucking idiot that you're just going to ignore half the shit he's saying or this person who everyone is saying is a criminal, well, great. But and, and fucking nearly half of the people didn't even go to vote. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the stunning thing. I mean, that's not that stunning. I mean, that's pretty typical, actually. But. I know, but like this should have been the an year, atypical right? race. <laughs> well, I thought, I, I, I guess so. I think, that, I think that backfired a little bit, too, because I think people were just tired. They're just like, whatever. Like, eventually, if you're not into it, like I am or like we are, and we, don't, we read and we're interested, then I think what you end up having is people just being like, you know what? Like, I just don't care. I hate them both. And this is the, and this is the, big, this is the big thing that, I'm, uh, that I feel like people don't walk away, or aren't walking away from this with is both, I've said this for months, since, actually since like May, when both of them clearly were going to win the nomination, which is that both of these candidates are fucking profoundly terrible candidates. That's not profoundly true. Profoundly terrible. That's not true. Yeah, That's it is. if all the shit that they've said about Hillary is true. And guess what? It's not. It's you, not true. Like, the, the things that, like, she's accused of aren't based on reality. It's based on people attacking and attacking and attacking because the Republican Party doesn't like her. The things, well, a lot of the Democrats don't like her either, clearly. And independents clearly don't like her. So that's a huge problem for her. Trump won independence by a mile. Now... What way with a huge margin? Now, the 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 big thing about it is I don't necessarily disagree with you that uh, Clinton has been castigated in such in certain things that she's not responsible for that there are no evidence for. My argument is when there's smoke, there's fire. Clearly, no, uh, no, not clearly, and not clearly. You can't say statements like that is why Trump has won. Statements like she's clearly a criminal and she's a piece of shit. Like this is someone who for her, most of her life has been dedicated to government. Right. To making a change and making the world better. Right. Like, you might not agree with the things that she wants to change and make better, but, like, the stuff that she did for healthcare with kids was important. Right. What has fucking Trump done? I didn't say Trump did anything. I didn't vote no, for I, I know, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, what? <laughs> why was he a better option? Because everyone was told to hate Hillary. And that all the shit that... Hillary has done that has never been proven. They couldn't prove it. Oh, she had a lot of emails. So did Bush. His emails disappeared too. 22 million of him. When Cheney was talking about the war, convincing people that we needed to go war, go to a war. Oh yeah, those are the days that they had blackouts and their emails disappeared. Guess what? The Bush campaign had all their emails going to an RNC server. Oh, an RNC server. <laughs> Not a server that was made for the fucking president that was in her house. But everyone chose to believe you when you said she was a criminal and a bad person. I do think she's a criminal. I do think she's a bad person. But she's not. Like, legally speaking, she's not. None of the things she's been accused of have been able to be proven. I think Hillary Clinton is unlikable. I think she's dishonest. I think she's a sheer opportunist. I think, and I'll say it again, and I just want to reiterate, would be completely fucking irrelevant on the political scene if not for her husband. That's and whether or not fine. anyone wants to argue with that, it's fucking fine with me. I don't care. It's not a man needs a woman kind of thing to be relevant. That's not what I'm saying at all. She's where she is because of what Bill Clinton did. She had Bill Clinton by the balls. She, she fucking carpet back to New York State. She would have lost to Rudy Giuliani in the Senate race. Rudy Giuliani got cancer at the last second, dropped out. She won. Otherwise, it would have never happened. This would have all never happened. There are reasons why people don't like her. There are reasons why Long Island voted for Trump. There are reasons why Staten Island voted for Trump. There are reasons why yeah, Upstate New York voted for Trump. They don't like her. They yeah. don't like her. Right? What, like, what makes you right 
You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I mean, looking this, at this the is record, exactly like this is exactly at, why her, Trump won. Don't you understand that? Looking at this her is, record is what like makes me feel like I'm right. And knowing that like all the things that I hear, like okay, aside from her being a carpetbagger, like none of those other statements are true. The shit that happened in Benghazi was tragic, but it wasn't like she. She was the Secretary of State. Was then where did she, the buck stop? Right. Where, like what? What was the great thing she did in the Senate for eight years? By the way, can you name one? No, I haven't looked in. Her when she Senate. voted for the war in Iraq, but then tried one to walk person, that back and act like she was a fucking didn't expert. Vote for the fucking war in Iraq. I supported the war in Iraq. So did almost everybody. I, I, yeah, I know everyone supported it because it was another incident, another something. Ugh. We were motivated by fear then, just like we are now. Fear and anger. That's exactly what got Trump. Nominated, uh, elected. I don't necessarily disagree that yeah. fear and anger got. And it's just it's such a tragedy that, like, you know, we we won't learn. A campaign based off of hate and anger got someone elected. Someone who is wildly unqualified, wildly unqualified to. I didn't run. vote for him. I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Sure it does. No, your vote was thrown away. It, she's winning the popular vote. Great. Yeah, I mean, that's more. I mean, it's not really. I mean, that has happened before, and I'm, yeah. I don't really read much into it, and it's very close. It's not like she's going to win by a point, you know? So, like, the. Here's the thing. And I'll get you in on this, Greg, and I don't know how you, how you feel about this. I mean, this is my kind of opinion on, on the situation, writ large. There's a large swath of the country that doesn't want to be told what to think, that got tired of being told that they were sexist and racist and misogynist and bigoted, that got tired of Washington, D.C. betraying them, that got tired of people on news channels telling them how to vote, that got tired of looking at polls that did not reflect the reality on the ground in their states, that got tired of reading Facebook about how bad Trump was and how everyone that voted for him was a racist and a misogynist, that they, and they know people that voted for Trump and that doesn't sync with their reality. So they, there was a backlash. A major backlash, right? This is exactly what happened in the UK with Brexit and in the 2015 election. This is what happened in the 2014 midterm election. And I'm going to tell you right now, if people don't learn how to talk to each other and learn how to re relate to each other in different kinds of ways, this isn't the end. This is a massive backlash against liberalism, against political correctness, and against the establishment. That's what it is. And like, if people want to cast blame and point at everyone, that's fine. I say point at your fucking selves. That's what I say. You I, mean, know? I agree with that. I agree. Point at yourselves. We all are at fault here. We... There is you know, a, there's, there's a large group of people that voted for Trump. That, yeah, they're being called all these things. But guess what? They all ignored a bigot. They all ignored a fucking misogynist. Like, that, those are things that are undeniable. Like, he is a bad fucking person. And not in the, like, oh, Hillary's a bad person, because look at, like, we have videos of him talking about fucking awful shit. Yeah, and, and, then, like, and, then, and, then, and then... And they... Ign I'm sorry, I'm almost done. No, they, no please, they, please, like, I didn't mean to interrupt you. They ignored him. They, they ignore those parts of who he is because of the shit he said. They're so upset with the system that... They fucking bought his snake oil. Because that's what he is. He's walking around saying he's going to do all this. Let's see when the fucking wall goes up. You know, let, let, let's see what... We all know that's what, not going to happen. Yeah, I know, but lots of people believe it is. We do and need to secure the, the border. We do need to secure the border. That's an, that's an issue that's very important to me. Illegal immigration is an important issue to me. But that's not going to happen. I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I mean, that, that, that's it. Like, there's the, this large community of people that are so tired of getting fucked by our system. Guess what? Have you guys ever seen a con man? I have. I've seen people come in, lie, get money, and then fucking walk away. And that's what we're getting here. And it just, it's so sad that these people that are getting used to getting fucked are going to get fucked again. And God, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that this fucking guy can make something great. Can fucking, he's got everything he needs. A united Senate and a united, 
House I mean, of Representatives. In that regard, but, like, and, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not happy about that. But I mean, that at least that, that at least we have completely uniform government we've that had, sides more with the way I feel. I'm not going to sit here and and act like that's a bad thing. Now we get Supreme Court justices. Now we get and and that's the thing that everyone up so, to three. Yeah, up to three. You're going to get three moderate Republican justices, like like uh, you know, because that's that's what's trending right now with with politics, moderateness, right? They're going to need they're going to need Senate Democrats to go along, or they're not going to get anyone. They're not going to be able to put fucking a Ku Klux Klan member on the fucking court, Kevin. This is, this is what not, I'm talking that's about. That's not what I'm saying. This is what I'm talking that's about. That's not with what the, I'm saying. This is what I'm talking about, though, with the hyperbole and why things are out of control. Because I, I don't know what's going to happen. Trump could end up being a fucking complete fascist. Uh, he's obviously a demagogue in some respect, but he could just say, like, we're, we're not going to have Congress anymore. Right? But the thing is, is that I believe more in, I believe more in the system, that it will correct itself. What people are really expressing today, and I understand, I understand the distress, but what people are expressing today is an imperial presidency, the likes of which the world has never seen, and that there are no checks and balances, that there's no uh, minority party that's going to keep him in check, which happens every time, and that the man is just going to suddenly just do, like, just fuck the entire place up? Like, I just believe in the system. I don't believe in Trump, but the system either exists or it doesn't. And, like, Clinton lost. The people spoke. You know, the Senate is Republican still. The House is just as Republican as it was two days ago. The people spoke. And everyone out there is acting like, you know, like it was this great injustice. And maybe you look at it like that. But what about all the 55 million people that voted for him? And everyone they represent. It's just, it's just like, I don't see the, I don't understand the fear and people say it's because I'm a white man. And maybe that's true, Right. Maybe that's true, but I don't understand how people think that a man is just going to walk into the White House and just put everyone in concentration camps. He's going to walk into the White House and just deport 14 million people. That's not the way the fucking the and system works. And that's not the fear. That's not the fear. The fear is, the fear and realization that people are coming to is that a man that said Mexico is sending all its criminals and fucking terrible people and, oh, yeah, let the Russian government fucking hack shit. Oh, it's not him. Oh, this Ku Klux Klan leader is fucking promoting me? Great. Oh, oh no, no, I didn't know. Like, the problem isn't all this shit is going to fucking fall apart, apart tomorrow. The problem is that all these people voted for him. Like, the, the, the sad, the, like, they were able to ignore all these horrible shit. And no one can deny the shit that he said is horrible. Yeah, I know that, Kevin. I left my party over him. Why is that lost on everybody? They're, everyone's talking at me like I didn't fucking know this. Th this is the thing Nobody's that really, talking this is the, this is the thing that really annoys me. I fucking left. I left. But I, I, I was like, this is unacceptable. The, the moment, first of all, we were all wrong about it, but I was like, this is not acceptable. I'm the one who said that. I said that from the beginning. So everyone pointing fingers at me on Twitter and all these kind of places being like, your third party vote fuck, fucked everything up. You didn't do enough to stop them. Fuck you. You know, and I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying to all those people out there. I left a party that I once worshipped because, uh, because of him. I cast my vote and bounced. And then I voted third party. I did everything I could. I got everyone I, I possibly could to say, like, do not vote for either of them. And that was the, and that was the thing. And that's the thing that fucking annoys the shit out of me the most. Is everyone on Twitter attacking me. You know? Like, like I did something. I was there from the very beginning sounding the clacks on. Saying, this isn't right. This man's not a Republican. He doesn't speak for me. And I bounced. What else, do, what else should I have done? You know? We, we have a two-party system. If you don't vote for one, you're helping the other. Like, that's the reality of things. And... You know, you told people to go and vote for the third party. I did. And, and you know what? They voted for their conscience. And people do not understand politics if they think that those voters would have voted for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, they're going to vote for the libertarian Republican. And then all of those votes would have went to Hillary Clinton. Yeah. No, but like... Hillary Clinton could have won 70% of Johnson's vote and she still would have lost. Don't know what else to say. You know, like... It could have been a landslide victory if John... Like, if... if if that happened, like those people, I hate to tell you, would have voted for Trump. I and I wish they did. I honestly do. I wish that it could have ended earlier, and the numbers. It just ah. 
My, my issue with you is the demonization of Hillary Clinton. As a New Yorker, that comes from a special place. Oh, that I is, know. That is I a know. Common years thing of propaganda. It's not years of propaganda. Yes, I was it there. Is. I watched it. I know. Kevin, and you I watched were indoctrinated it happen. Kevin. In it. Kevin, I watched it happen with my own two eyes when I was in high school. A woman moving to my state in 1999, setting up an office in Harlem, then running for the Senate. And winning. She won because Rudy Giuliani got prostate cancer. Why is that lost on everybody? That's exactly because what happened. Because she won. I was there. People don't think about why. They think that, okay, she won. What, what was... It, it just, it, Greg, what do you have to say? I mean, this is the problem. This is why I didn't want to come to work today. This is why I, you know, don't like this at all. Uh, this is the, where the country's at. This is the problem, that we can't have conversations about anything. It is all hyperbole. It is all screaming. Someone's a criminal, that, or they didn't do anything, or whatever. And now we got to go. And so that's the worst part about it, right, is that it's the... First time I can ever think about a bitch being like, man, does it suck to be an American. And that sucks as much as I love being an American. <laughs> but like, you know, especially now with like a Canadian girlfriend worth the first time, I was just like, fuck man, like I don't know if you'd ever want to move here or if I could ever tell you to move here or anything like that. Now granted, I'm saying that in the, uh, j not even Trump himself, just in the fact of like, we're this divided and it's this fucked up. And <sighs> it's just, even if, Hillary won, this would still be the problem. We would still have this, this, this difference here, this separation right now of people where we can't have a conversation, and that's the problem, that no one can ever talk about politics and not have it become this. And it's been this way for years. This isn't the first time. And so the hard thing now is the, the liberals, the liberal echo chamber we live in being, you know, people of the arts or whatever, creators, that kind of thing, the people we see on Twitter now, it's... You just got punched in the face, and it's so hard to ask in this moment everyone to calm the fuck down and rise above and not be what we all were so mad at, the Republican conservative party before, right? Where how many people are talking about, like, like last night it happens, Trump gets elected, and they're like, you know what, at least there's going to be scandals, at least we'll see him impeached, at least there's going to be this. Don't forget he's on trial for rape in December and all these different things. And it's hard to balance that anger with then remember how angry everyone was when Rush Limbaugh said he wanted Obama to fail when Obama took office and we we're all like what the fuck he's the president that's the hard fucking pill to swallow this morning is that I'm anxious to get away from today away from this not to get away from the issues but to get, try to see if we can get on the same page of all right he's the president-elect he is the president he now is out for the good of the country we have to and I'm not saying we don't look at him we don't have checks and balances we don't worry about what he's doing or anything but we can't, it's the same thing, I mean, he's, the problem with Romney, right, why I didn't vote for Romney was that I felt he was a turncoat, right, and the fact of, like, when he's governor, he doesn't mind the gay stuff, he doesn't mind the abortion stuff, whatever, I'm chill. Then he comes to run, and he has to hard correct to the Republican Christian movement of, like, no, 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 gay's bad, abortion's bad. And I was like, all right, well, fuck you then. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know where you stand, and that's what I'm not about. So now it's like, how... Well, who is the real Trump? Is the Trump who was saying all these horrible things and doing all these crazy things? Like, and it's... Ugh, I'm mostly, I'm just... I'm oh, no, I know, I know you're not ignoring me at all. I'm just, you know, going off the cuff here. It's something we've said before, and I'm not putting it aside, obviously, but the grabber by the pussy thing and all these different things, right? We've talked about it before, that if a camera was rolling on us all time, we've said stupid shit when we're getting ready to do this. No, I don't think we've ever said that. I'm, I'm Everyone sure. has said stupid, calamitous shit. Exactly. And so it's that like, I'm it. not going to sit here and have that be what I'm going to flay him for or whatever. And so then it just becomes of what is going to happen. Like, you see these problems of, like, you know, today they were talking about, like, uh, I forget who. If it, I, forget if it was, I think it was somebody from his campaign. But I'm just, you know, there's, like, so much fucking information out there right now. I'm talking about, like, some, some plan. I forget what they call it. But his day one plan of, like, wanting to... They wanted to sit him down for a few hours and have him sign executive orders undoing Obama's executive orders or whatever, right? And it's like, is that hyperbole? Is that the real thing? Is that what it's going to be? And like where it gets scary for me isn't grab her by the pussy. It isn't the wall. It is the thing of like, well, what does this mean for Roe versus Wade? And what does this mean for gay marriage? And like, you know what I mean? Can, can we... 
get that far into getting it undone. And yeah, there's checks and balances, right? But the, here's the problem with the argument, is the fact that in the same way Bernie was important, in the same way Trump is important, is the fact that, yeah, there is this fed up. And this is what I've talked about with you for years, right? Of like, man, I don't pay, t I don't care about politics because every po politician's a fucking son of a bitch who just doesn't, it is this thing owned by big corporations and super PACs, all this other shit. You can't trust a fucking thing they say. You have Hillary who is that. And I'm not saying, uh, Kevin, I'm not saying based on, okay, so I'm just saying who she is, right? And so then you have Trump, yeah, who comes to do this. And you have people voting for him because they want to beat the system. They want to get away from everything. But when we bring in the new guy who's, you know, going to be able to, who's going against the system, what does that mean with the system? And that's where it gets scary, where you're talking about people are panicking about all these, like the hyperbole, the swing back in, of, you know, like R Rami Ismail, right? Uh, um, Lambert on Twitter, uh, Devolver. No, no, that's not right. Um, is it Devolver? Shit, fuck. Uh, let me check real quick. But he was tweeting today, right? Uh, obviously, Rami, super well known in the development communities, you know. Lambert, I don't know how to say Devolver, but he just works the multi. Um, he was talking today about how, you know, he opened his DMs or whatever, and somebody, a foreign dev DM'd him concerned about coming here for GDC. Right, which is ridiculous. And that's the, and, but I, but here, it's. Sorry. But here's the thing. I, I agree. I'm like, whoa, an extreme reaction. Yeah, you would say so. But the problem is, is that it's the same thing everywhere else. And this is what I keep, keep trying to grab my, you know, grab something for me to try to hold on as the world seems to be spinning so quickly right now. And you want to panic and you want to think everything is the worst thing in the world. The problem is, is that like Brexit happens. And then we immediately start hearing these stories of like, oh, they insulted their server and said to do this. Oh, they drove by and screamed. Last night I saw a tweet of like some some uh, woman, I forget, and I think she was a minority, was walking in a car, screamed something at her about Trump being in power now. And of course, Trump's giving his victory speech and someone in the crowd yells, kill Obama. And it's like, it's always, it's the bad apples spoiled a bunch for sure and make it seem worse than it is and da 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 but it's what we talk about even with guns right of how many fucking millions of guns there are in the United States and, they're, and not, there's not a shooting every day on every street there's not a there mass are more shooting guns every than day people. and it's this thing of like it's I don't think if you would have brought in Hillary Clinton, these problems would have gone away, that you wouldn't have seen this, that we would have sitting, be sitting here talking about hope and justice and everything's going to be fixed now and everything's good. We'd have the same argument, but the problem is that for our echo chamber, not you, but no, our, our industry echo chamber of liberalism would be the same way of it would be the conservatives now spouting off about how everything's about to go to fucking hell and da-da-da-da-da, and we'd all be like, well, no, blah, blah. And so you understand that on the other side of the line, there's the conservative people who are saying the exact same thing. I, what I, what for me, what no one, no one. All right, I gotta, I gotta stop you there real quick. There was no one on the conservative side that was saying the amount of hyperbolic shit that is being said right now about Donald Trump. Now I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong or true or false, but I was in those trenches and that wasn't being said. So like, you know, I was there. Like I, I, I was there. I was there after Romney lost. I was there after McCain lost. I didn't even vote for McCain. I remember what people were saying. People were scared and they were saying terrible shit about Obama, but they weren't calling into question uh, the complete ability of the system to function. That, that, that's, a, that's a different kind of thing, and that's something I take great offense about, because the system has survived way worse than Donald Trump. And I hate to, and I, and I hate to tell people like that. Like I said, maybe I'm totally wrong, and Donald Trump ends up being the fascist dictator that some people say is. I hope not. I just don't understand how that happens. Like, no one has actually t explained to me. I'm like, how does that happen? I want someone to explain to me how that happens in the United States. Use a little bit of history. Let's talk about the Weimar Republic. Let's talk about all these things. And we can figure out how does a man get elected president by uh, 55 million people and then become a dictator that uh, puts you in prison camps and deports 14 million people and removes your right to do all of these things. How does that happen? I want someone to explain it. I don't think that that's the fear. I don't think that that's where all those tweets and messages are coming from. I think it's the exact opposite of... Obama's first run where he was elected with the campaign of hope and like when he got elected I had hope and now it's the opposite Trump was elected with fucking anger and hatred and now the counterbalance like, to that oh, I'm sorry you want to keep no it? I'm just saying like I don't think the world's gonna suddenly change but it's fucking terrifying that that's what won sure. anger and hatred yeah sure. but you have to understand that and this is the thing that I think is, is important. It's imperative for us to understand this. If this narrative doesn't change about the people that, like, the vitriol about Trump voters, I've talked about that. We did a whole episode about this a month ago or so. 
I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed by it. Because in my mind, first of all, I know a lot of Trump voters. In my family, friends, know a lot of people. Long Island voted for Trump. Long Island, not exactly a hick place, if you guys didn't know. One of the most affluent places in the entire country. They voted for Trump, right? It's not just a redneck, racist, uh, misogynist group of people that voted for him. He won white women by 20 points. You know, like, clearly the narrative didn't work. The question is, what is the objective truth? And the reason that I'm disturbed about this is because the truth is talked about subjectively as if a group of people, 55 million people, didn't know what they were doing. They're all fucking stupid. They're all racists. Even though many of their states voted for Obama twice, they're all now apparently racists. They're misogynists. They're bigots. And it doesn't make sense. The narrative about this group of people doesn't make sense. There are, of course, bad apples amongst them. Of course. Of course there are. There might be a, a bigger per capita group of bad apples amongst this group of voters than we see with Romney or McCain or Bush. Sure. Of course. But what's not lost on me is that within there are tens of millions of good, hardworking people sure. that aren't racists, that aren't bigots, that don't give a fuck who you marry, that don't give a fuck if you abort your child. They don't care. They just want a job. They just want trade to be fair. They just want an immigration policy. They just want, why can't these people vote without being castigated and, 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 and pointed fingers and told them that they're wrong? This is why Clinton lost. I don't understand why people don't understand that. And if this narrative continues, the Republicans will win again. Because now they realize that they, 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 they this is the thing I tweeted out yesterday that got retweeted like 2,000 times because it was true. Clinton had the entire media, the entire entertainment industry, and much more money and she lost. Why? Because people don't like being told that they're wrong, that they don't know what's good for them, and that they don't know how to vote for themselves. So keep pointing fingers at everyone. And the midterms will be an equal bloodbath in 2018. Like, I don't understand how that particular point is lost on people. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying a vote for Trump was a good vote. I'm not saying a vote for Clinton was a bad vote. What I'm saying is there's a reason we got here. There's a reason we got here. And it has nothing to do with these fucking issues. It has to do with a struggle against the power system, against the liberal elite, against the coastal elite, against the capital, against the media. They all gave the finger to these people for years. And they gave the finger back. And if you want to go and call Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania and all these places racist, misogynist, go ahead. I think you're wrong. I think we all know that, right? So I, I really feel like there has to be more understanding on both sides. But I'm disturbed about the characterization of the people that voted their conscience. And I but don't- But is that just happening again in the echo chamber is my thing. Because, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, as I talked about in the thing, I know people who are like, yeah, I'm voting for Trump and fuck all Muslims. And I'm like, whoa. But yeah, obviously, the majority, I mean, he's won. You know what I mean? This happened. This didn't happen by hook and crook. It, obviously, he, people are there. But my, So my point is that I, I, what I, I think the one of the, I mean, there's a thousand fucking million tweets about it la last night, right? But the one that I think summed it up the best was somebody tweeted out, Trump supporters aren't racist, Trump supporters aren't racist, Trump supporters aren't racist, and somebody quote tweeted and said, Trump supporters are voting for a racist, Trump supporter, I think that's the issue yeah. that I, it's when you're like, they don't, these people are voting and they don't give a fuck about gay marriage and they don't give a fuck about abortion, well, that's great, the guy they're voting for does, and that's the disconnect. No, he doesn't, I mean that's the other I mean, thing, that's and, that's, and, that's, and that's the other thing, this is something I was talking about with Aaron yesterday, and this is, an, this is an important, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to get this in Kevin before you give your point. No, no, it's okay. no Trump never brings up social issues. Trump was the first, and I remember watching this and I was astounded. Trump at the Republican convention was like, uh, it said something about how he wants equality for gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender people. He said it at the Republican convention. Why is that lost on everyone? You understand what I'm saying? I understand Mike Pence is a fucking maniac. He's the vice president. He's useless. He has no power. 
for you now. Understand? I was looking at Trump last night, and I'm like, because I remember when Obama got elected, and they did that whole, like, let's see what he would look like in four years. And I'm like, oh, man, Trump already looks like a fucking... Old man, what the hell and, is going to happen? And it him? doesn't matter what Mike Pence thinks because then you have to you have to you have to There's sync that up with with other things. Roe versus Wade, for instance, isn't going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Gay marriage isn't going anywhere. I don't understand why people are so scared. You think that's really going to happen? But those like, were, land, were those landslide victories? No, they weren't. But no, what I'm they saying were is, very close. They were close, very Kevin. Close. Well, Roe versus Wade, first of all, has been established for many years, and there have been conservative courts since then, and they have not overturned it. Second of all. In terms of the gay marriage argument, which could be kicked back to the states, then the states will just say, like, okay, it's a Tenth Amendment, right? We're just going to legalize gay marriage. It's the same thing that abortion happens with abortion. It's just what I'm saying is it's the same thing that happened with marijuana. What I'm saying is that all is lost. If we defederalize some of these decisions, then the states are just going to make the same decisions anyway. Some states will. Yes, yeah, some states will. And some states, I guess, won't. But I believe in the federal protection for gay marriage. This is why when people are coming at me being like, you're just, you're not socially liberal. You know, I am socially liberal. I was for gay marriage 10 years before Barack Obama was for gay marriage. I've been for a woman's right to choose for many years. And I really do feel like those are established fundamental things for the, the, the rights of the people. I think that they're, they're uh, exclusionary. I think that they're discriminatory. And I think that that's unconstitutional. And I think it's illegal. And I think it's wrong. But these weren't issues that Trump ran on. So I'm just, I'm, Trump ran on the economy and Trump ran on immigration. So we have to, I, I want to just give it, you know, Hillary Clinton said today, and I think she was right. I, I, first of all, I think her concession speech was 12 hours too late, but it was, uh, and I thought that that was very uh, shitty of them. And I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. But, um, oh yeah, she should have done less than It was totally cowardly and it was totally ridiculous. When they didn't do it, I was like, oh, they're not going to give up the ground. They're going to, they want all the votes counted. And then like 20 minutes later, like she just called the concede. I was like, oh, uh, that's weird. So the, the, the interesting thing about it is she said this morning, and I thought it was a good speech, I thought she gave a very, very nice speech, considering it looked like she wanted to burst out into tears, and I respect that, is she said, we owe him the benefit of the doubt. And I agree. Obama said something similar, right? Like, now we, now we all are Trump supporters. Not even say that, but you know what I mean? We're all behind him on this. He's the president-elect. I think that we have to just... I, wanted, like, I'm not, I don't want to jump to any conclusions. When I, voted for, when I broke party lines and voted for Obama in 2008... It wasn't an easy thing for me to do. It was a principled vote because I fucking hated Sarah Palin. It's a very similar thing to the reason that I hated Trump. They're just, they're idiots. At, at, on the, at the outside, I actually think Trump's sometimes the smartest man in the room. But, and I think that <laughs> you can easily make that case now. But when I, made, when I made that principled vote for Obama, I didn't agree with almost anything he said. What I thought was, this is a different kind of man. This is a different kind of person. I want to see mm. what happens. And, and what happened was I didn't like what I saw and I didn't vote for him again, you know? But at that time, more than 10% of Republicans broke party lines to vote for Obama under the same auspices that there's nothing he's saying we agree with. It's just, we don't really like what's going on. We don't really like John McCain that much. And we, don't, we certainly don't like Sarah Palin. And we should try to figure out if there's a way forward for us to, be, to work together, to be post-partisan as the talk was in 2007, 2008, which obviously didn't work out very well. And that was, uh, that's something you said earlier, and I forget, but it jogs my memory over here, in the fact that, yeah, like, oh, you're talking about hope. You know what I mean? Like, it was the Obama thing, right? And I remember being so hopeful in 2007 when we voted, no, 2008, is that, yeah, that was the last one, was, uh, whatever. Uh, voting for him, and that, because oh, especially for me, somebody who was jaded that all politicians are the same, this is all just going to be the same bullshit, it really doesn't matter who's in charge. And then when he came along, it was like, oh, shit, okay, here we go, this guy is going to do this, and like, He's been a more fun president, for sure. He's been a, a presidential president that I like seeing or whatever, but I don't feel like I've seen the sweeping changes I wanted, the unification of the country. It wasn't and so, possible. And, so that, well, and that's the whole thing. He's like, then it was like, you know, the Trump speech last night was going to be so, or in any, I'm not even Trump, Trump or Clinton's speech last night was going to be so cookie cutter of, it's time to heal and it's time to do this and blah. Like, no one's actually fucking making action about it. And that's the problem of, like, why, like, I am a person who hates the Capitol and doesn't believe in any of these politicians. And what I've said from the start with it, right, is, like, the best thing about Bernie and Trump, whether, however the election was going to end, is that I hope this has shown every fucking career politician out there that, like, okay, we need to be real human beings. And when it comes around, whether it's for the fucking mayor or for the next presidential election, hey, I'm a normal person, and let's talk about things, and let's talk about issues, and let's talk about what's happening. And here, I'm going to say something, and yep, there is a video of me fucking smoking weed or whatever, and I'm a fucking human being, because that's not what we've gotten for so long, and that's why Hillary, like, Hillary 
wasn't looked at as this awesome candidate because she is still that old. And then Trump's this new but so skewed off in a way I don't think people wanted it to be. It would have been fascinating to see Bernie Sanders versus Trump at this point. Yeah, I don't think I think that would have turned out very similarly, to be honest. But the but the if not worse, actually. I but think it would have been worse. Uh, like I, I like I've said before, and I, I you know Sanders, I respect him. I think he's honest. I think he says what he means. I think that uh, the numbers were stacked against him from the beginning. If you believe Gallup. Uh, about America's taste for socialism. I would never vote for Bernie Sanders in a million years. So it's, it's uh, you know, and there are plenty of people like me. But, but that's regardless. I think, I think Bernie Sanders was, was, if not robbed, I think that clearly it was stacked against him. And I think that the DNC has a lot of soul searching. But I think before we get, we have a ton of tips I want to read. But before we get into that, I just want to say, you know, think better of your fellow man. That's all, that's, I really am a pessimistic person by nature, but I am optimistic about people generally. Yes, there are going to be racists and there are going to be bigots and there are going to be people saying terrible things and those things are going to rise to the top. A person getting yelled at on the street is going to rise to the top. But how many times did that happen today? You know, like that, that's, that's what I'm curious about. It happened a dozen times? Okay, that's terrible. I, I feel bad about that, but there are 55 million people that voted for him. There are 320 million people in the United States. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I just think better of these people. The reason I think better about them is because I know them. You know, like... And so I just don't believe the narrative about them. I don't. And, and people can, can choose to believe that or choose not to believe that, but I really do believe that good people voted on both sides. They voted their conscience. There's upset people, and I respect that, and I empathize with people that are upset about things, but I think that catastrophe, like, make, I don't know that's word, making things into a catastrophe is not helpful and actually is exactly why Trump won to begin with. So I, I really, the political correctness, there's a big, massive backlash in the United States against all of this bullshit, against safe spaces, against microaggressions, against all of this shit, against trigger warnings. Sure, There's sure, a sure. massive backlash. If you think that you're in the majority believing those things, you are fucking dead wrong. Dead wrong. And oh, there's and there's, proof. and there's a massive there's a massive backlash against all of that bullshit. So that comes part and parcel with the way people voted for Trump for the economy, for immigration, for all these kinds of things, tax policy, whatever it might be. And then there's a small sliver of racism. There's a small sliver of thing. But to go to these, these Trump voters, many of whom, you know, looking at the Wisconsin map, fascinating. They were comparing 20 to 2008, 2012, and 2015, uh, 16 in Wisconsin. Many of these rural counties voted overwhelmingly for, well, overwhelmingly for Obama. Oh, now they're suddenly racist, I guess. Now they're just racist because they didn't vote for the candidate you wanted. That's the thing you have to be careful about. That's the thing you have to be careful about. A lot of these people were your allies, and now you hate them. That's not going to be a productive kind of way to move forward. And I, and I really do encourage people to really think about the way they're talking to and treating other people on both sides of the aisle. And that's the, only, that's the only thing that I think we can take away from this. The other thing I'll say is this, and this is not a unique thought, although I've said it before, Bill Maher said a similar thing, other people said a thing. When the media, which is biased and in the pocket of the Democratic Party, period, when they said that Bush was Hitler, that McCain was Mussolini, that Romney was Tojo, and that all turned out to be false, well, you probably should have saved those attacks for the man who actually was scary. That's your fault for believing those things. And that's why the people didn't listen this time, because they were lied to over and over and over again. You see George W. Bush now holding hands with Michelle Obama and things, and they're all friendly and stuff like that, and you're like, huh. He hasn't said a word. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't done anything bad in eight years. Just sat there graciously taking the fucking punches to the face and the punches to the gut has said nothing, has not defended himself. He makes paintings, though, too. He makes some paintings. I want to do a Portillo one. I've asked Jenna Bush on Twitter to talk to her father. She has not yet. So, to me, it's like, I feel like everyone looks at them and they're like, oh, that's not... McCain, a war hero who was in fucking captivity for five years, talked about as if he was going to end women's right to exist. As if he was going to... And then that turned out McCain's just a totally normal guy. Mitt Romney comes along. Everyone's like, Mitt Romney hates women. Mitt Romney hates minorities. It's like, what? Are you nuts? Yeah. And then the man who actually might feel this way comes along. And, everyone, and everyone's like, oh, Hitler, Hitler. And like, everyone's like, well, but you called Mitt Romney Hitler. You called John McCain Hitler. You called George W. Bush Hitler. We don't believe you. Take some fucking responsibility. Well, now, yeah, but I mean, it goes to every person, right? It goes to everyone talking about hyperbole. It's come up a lot in this show, right? And I think that's the problem. When you don't treat, either, when you don't treat the opponent with respect, that's what happens. That's how it gets out of the way. It's like when you were calling all the Bernie Sanders uh, supporters the most sensitive people you'd ever seen, right? That angers them and shuts them down to ever listen to you. Yeah, someone says in the chat, Mitt Romney had a binder full of women. It's like, what? Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? 
The character assassinations got so old that the man who was ripe for character assassination just bounced off of him. Because everyone's like, well, we don't really trust the media anymore. We don't like the media. The media's wrong, and we hate them. The media lost. Let's get into the chat, or to the, to the tips, because we have a lot of them. And I'm going to read them kind of quickly, if that's okay. Unless there's something we want to talk about. Kevin, if there's anything you hear that you want to talk about, say it. Lobo gives the first tip, said, thanks, Colin. I love and appreciated all your views and value your take on the election. With Brexit and this election, I think more studies or classes will be looked in, looking into media polling results. I agree. Um, and I talked about this on Game Over Greggy's show about the shy Trump voter, that, that there was a significant portion of people that were not being polled, and it was going to be way closer than everyone expected, and then a lot of people laughed me off. Uh, BG2580 says, there's one thing that concerns me more than the economy. Now the Republicans control all. The environment is fucked. Not necessarily. There are a lot of pro, uh, pro um, environment Republicans. One thing that was lost that is interesting is that uh, Rob Portman um, was elected, what was sent back to the Senate, who was the first Republican senator to be openly for gay marriage. Just straight up. Is Scientific American uh, respectable? Mm -hmm. Okay. They say Trump picks top climate skeptic to lead EPA transition. I mean, that's not surprising. Yeah. Um, Otis Spunkmeyer gave us uh, a tip and said, what may be most depressing to me is climate change. He will ignore the stipulations of the Paris Agreement, cancel Obama's clean energy executive actions, and appoint oil tycoons to high positions. It's true. The, the reason that I think this is going to happen mostly is because it's going to stimulate jobs. Um, that said, I think it's important to keep a check on the environment. I think it's important to protect the environment. Let's remember, um, although the Republican Party of today is detached from the Republican Party of the late 19th century, that the first people that protected the environment were Ulysses S. Grant, a Republican, and Teddy Roosevelt, a Republican. So... Um, we should try to get back to those roots, those pop more pop that's a populist root. Party could come for a full circle in that way. We'll see. Colin was right, gave us tips said, Colin, you are a man of integrity. You speak your mind and I love you for it. Screw the haters. Thank you very much. Braden says, uh, gave us tips said the real narrative. Dems didn't turn out. Romney got two million more votes than Trump. Romney got more votes than Trump in Wisconsin. Clinton didn't inspire people to go out and vote like Obama did. That's very true as well. That's yeah, that's the point, right? That yeah. You're talking, like as I was saying earlier, the flip flop, right, mm -hmm. of where it was. Yeah, I think you the thought, black thought it was going to be that you needed a Republican candidate that was worthwhile, and it right. turned out they needed a Democrat. That yep, was. I think you're right about that, Greg. And I think that the black vote specifically might have been um, depressed now because the the polling for Obama was going to have a massive black turnout and a massive discrepancy between uh, the way blacks voted to the tune of like 95 percent. And when that falls to like 88 percent plus turnout is lower, that really because there are black Republicans, there are a lot of them. That 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 um. That seems to sway away, right? Yep. Um, Four Carrot says, is the Electoral College a good thing? Clinton has nearly 200,000 more popular votes, yet Trump won the Electoral College. Clinton is only the fifth person in history to have this occur. Um, yeah, I, I personally, so we did a conversation with Colin about this a long time ago. You guys can go check that out on YouTube. Um, but the Electoral College exists for a reason. I do believe in it. We are a republic. We are not a democracy. Um, and uh, it protects the small states. The problem with the Electoral College is that, and not small geographically, but small I'm population. I'm going to explain the Electoral College. Uh, uh, the, the, so the problem uh, with this particular thing is that uh, you need 37 states to agree to amend the Constitution, and the small states are never going to elect, are never going to get rid of their, um, uh, their extra edge uh, federally, as it were. Uh, next tip comes from... My, my dog, Nick96, who says, Hi guys, now with California, Nevada, and Massachusetts legalizing marijuana, I vote we form a crystal bassoon orchestra. I'd also like to elect you, Colin, as first chair. It's possible. Uh, it's crazy how things have changed in Massachusetts, particularly um, so rapidly. When I went to college at Northeastern in Massachusetts, uh, it was illegal to have anything um, with mandatory minimum sentences, if I remember correctly. It has swung a massive way in 10 years um, to legalizing it there, and I congratulate them for that, and I congratulate California for, do, for rectifying the mistake of 2010 when we voted down legal marijuana. Uh, marijuana is going to be good for the economy. There is nothing wrong with smoking marijuana if you are an adult, a productive person. Um, it's not going to hurt you, and it's not going to kill you. Alcohol is 10 times more uh, destructive, 100 times more destructive than marijuana. Plus, who doesn't like getting stoned every once in a while? The next tip comes from Laughing Surrey. So it's very torn. Part of me wants this to be a disaster so that people who voted Trump can realize this was a terrible idea. But I live here too, so I should want Trump to be the best president ever. It is a conundrum. Um, I always root, you know, I've been in some losing presidential elections myself, and uh, I always try to root for the person that's in there just because it, it does benefit all of us if he does well. So hopefully Trump is the best president ever. I doubt that's going to happen. Warrior C27 gave us a tip. Said the feeling a lot of Americans have today is exactly what Britons who voted to remain in the EU felt in June. What happened in June with the polls in the UK happened in the US with their polls. I know, and that's exactly... Uh, that's exactly what I uh, talked about on the Game Over Greggy show that we did about a month ago, um, where I talked specifically about Brexit, specifically about what is called there the shy Tory vote, um, um, and, and uh, the spiral of silence, which is a political uh, term for uh, when uh, folks basically 
don't voice their opinions um, or don't confidently do it or lie about their opinions because they don't feel safe um, to do it. And that's what happened here, and it was predictable. Uh, let's see. Darkin gave us a tip and said, hey, Colin, voted third party with no regrets. Was not going to be happy either way. Really want to read the future book about how this election unfolded behind the scenes. Just wish it was fiction. That book's going to be great. It'll be like Game Change, which is the great book about McCain and Obama. I wonder who was, if anybody had a, like if Hillary had a documentary crew following her. I hope so. That'd be very interesting. Uh, Caleb LaChapelle gave us two tips, uh, the same message. It says, hey guys, this is my first election and I got to cover it on live broadcast for student media. I heard a group say yesterday, quote, while well, the real Americans voted for Clinton, end quote, referring to the coasts. Oh, and Jesus. then I lost my shit on them. I decided that my job would be for the next four years to make people civil again. We drank the Kool-Aid on this election, and it cannot happen again. And thanks, guys. I think you are right. If you think you're better than someone because you voted for Clinton over Trump, you're wrong. If you think you're better than someone because you're from New York or from Massachusetts or from California than someone from Tennessee or Alabama or Mississippi, you're wrong. Just want to make that very clear. But for the record, you do think you're better than everybody because you're from New York. Well, no, I think I'm better from everyone because I'm from Long Island. Uh-oh, Angelo gave us a tip. And said, I've heard a lot about Elizabeth Warren regarding this election in 2020, but I almost know nothing about her. Colin, can you give a brief overview of her and your opinion of her? I love you guys. So Elizabeth Warren is a senator from Massachusetts. Um, she is, uh, was a Harvard professor, a uh, very smart woman, um, beat Scott Brown in that senatorial race, who was a carpetbagger in his own right, kind of bouncing between New Hampshire and Massachusetts trying to win elections. Um, so the thing about Elizabeth Warren that's interesting to me is um, that she has the populism of uh, Trump with the socialist message of Sanders coming from a woman, uh, an older grandmotherly kind of woman that you can kind of relate to, you kind of want to like. Uh, I think she'll be a powerful force in 2020. My theory right now, as I was talking about last night, is that I don't think Trump will even run again. Um, so, really? Yeah, so I think that... Uh, Why? I think, I think it's safe to assume that he probably couldn't even win again, no matter what happened, right? So, yeah. um, so I think he just bows out. I don't think he wants to lose either. So I think he won, he made his point, and he'll bounce. It'll right. be like James Polk when eventually he's going to be like, I'm not even running again. Um, and so I think you're going to have a very honest, moderate Republican like John Kasich or someone like that, or maybe Rubio will come back, against, uh, against Elizabeth Warren. I think it's going to be quite the fight. And a much better issues-based fight than this one was. Do you think there's time for anyone to... I mean, it, I, I don't know. I guess that's a stupid question because obviously people rise up all the time. But it's going to be interesting in this new world, this new, uh, hey, I want to be the president and I can talk my mind and speak myself and I don't have to be a career politician. I'm interested to see if we see somebody else like that come along who is the liberal Donald Trump. Well, this you're shows... Mark Cuban. You're the rock Dwayne Johnson. This shows that that kind of stuff works now. The, the, thing, about, uh, uh, the thing about Trump that's interesting to me just as a, as a, as a, a political you know, kind of lover is that we always wanted someone like him. Not someone who says the things he says, but someone who's just not, who's self-funded and yeah. who just doesn't have any political experience because I really want to see how it works. I don't agree with the, the notion that you can't run the country like a business. I just don't agree with it. The reason I don't agree with it is because it's never happened. So let's see. If it doesn't work, then I'll, then I'll say, okay, we can't quite run it like this, but I agree. I, I think that it's important uh, to try different things um, because we do have a lot of stagnation uh, politically. Uh, let's see. Next tip comes from mm, laughing sorry so serious question would people hate Hillary this much if she were a man uh, I feel like they would might might even hate her more uh, the reason I say that is because uh, I think because she's a woman I think that actually garnered her a lot of sympathy uh, with women right um, so women typically vote liberal overall but uh, for instance, that can attract some independent women, that can attract people that just want to see the first woman president. And I think it was probably a net benefit for her. That said, I'm sure that there are people that hate her just because she's a woman. Um, I think we'll see the first woman president very soon. So I, I don't think that, you know, uh, it's not Hillary Clinton, it'll be someone else. Craig O'Skip said, the email server alone is enough for prosecution. That in itself is illegal. The reason she wasn't tried for it was due to the current DOJ setup. Wait and see in the new year what, for what happens. Nothing's going to happen. This is the thing, is that this would be a very bad move. Rudy Giuliani is going to be the Attorney General, that's obvious. Now, um, for them to go ahead and prosecute her would look very, very bad. What I was telling Erin this morning, what I think would be an interesting move, is if they just pardon her. Mm. You know? Just be like, if, a, if something happens and she's indicted, just be like, no, it's over. You know, like just go away. That would buy them. A, that would be the, the most politically savvy thing they could possibly do. It would be ama an amazing um, olive branch to the Democrats, to Hillary Clinton, to be like, no, no, we are pardoning you. Mm. It would hurt him with his own party, but it, it doesn't. You know, 
we won, like, you know, we as conservatives, I guess, we won the day, right? So, like, you don't have to, 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 to bury her. It's, you know, unless she, like, you know, is, is guilty of something catastrophic, which, you know, I don't think the email service necessarily are. Um, and people are saying Obama would partner. You can't really partner before she's prosecuted. There's prosecuted. no crime. There's, there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no crime yet. You can't just partner. Um, Harmonic Torture said, against him, said, Trump owes Kellyanne Conway so much. Underrated player behind the scenes. Hashtag Conway was right. I said that from the very beginning. Kellyanne Conway um, was the, the difference maker there. Fucking brilliant woman. And I'll be interested to see if she, I assume she'll be uh, chief of staff or something. But um, she, changed, she turned that whole thing around. It was really an incredible sight to behold. Placenta Milkshake, which is an interesting name, gave us a tip and said, The God Emperor has been elected. Get on board, Kevin. Only four years till Hail Colin. You want me to be president, Kevin? No, definitely not. Why not? What would I do? That would be so bad. I don't like a lot of your views. What would I do, though? That would be so bad. Give me some specifics. I mean, I don't know. You haven't set up, you haven't told us what you would do. Slash taxes, slash spending, and build the wall <laughs> as he walks away. Uh, Anxiety42 gives a tip. Like Kevin is right to a certain degree, but Hillary also fucked up in Benghazi. The DNC pretty much rigged the Democratic nomination over Bernie. I agree with that. Frosty Danny says, Colin, I will always love and respect your opinions, and I know you are a good person. Please be positive and have empathy for other people who are scared. P.S. Greg, you look great, and Kevin's courage slash opinion. That's fair enough. I just think that people are being hyperbolic. I mean, that's just, that's just it. Like, I, I understand that there's some things to be concerned about. The world is not ending. We will be okay. Look at the way the markets rebounded today. Right? Like... It's honestly the same thing that happened with Brexit. Now, now the British pound is weak, but, but the markets are stable. Not all is lost. This is how you actually... It's the reaction to this situation that could actually be worse than the situation itself and make it worse. That's my opinion. Jared007 says, If the reality was that the whole country had a vote, do you think the results would have been different? Maybe. I don't believe in compulsory voting. So, like they do in Australia, for instance. JJ Harrison 24 gave us tips. So thankful for you guys in the kind of funny community. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the role that gender played in the election. Is it valid to say that sexism was a major factor? We just talked about this. I don't necessarily think it was, but perhaps it is. I don't, I don't have any numbers or any proof to one way or the other. Warrior C27 said one reason Trump won small towns and villages became disenfranchised with the government believing it will never change, and then someone one comes along and offers hope for a change, they will win. I agree. Anf0012 gave us a tip and said, everyone screaming Clinton won the popular vote needs to understand population graphics. They forgot once they get the electoral votes in a state, popular vote is moot within the polls. That's true, too. Lolo Pro gave us a tip. Oh, Lolo Po Pro gave us a tip and said, Colin, I think you, are, you think both are below the threshold, but the election had to elect someone. If you had to pick, would, would, would Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump be better as president? Um, I mean, I've said it before. If someone held a gun to my head and said I had to vote for one of them, I'd vote for Trump. So... Um, I just don't like Hillary Clinton. Now, that said, what I think, I think Hillary Clinton would be a more capable president. What is, because she has experience. What's better or worse is, is uh, remains to be seen, but I refuse to vote for either of them. And you don't have to vote for one of the two candidates. Uh, Dirt410 gave tips said, this bigly amount of a tip is for Kevin. Keep up the good work. Unfortunately, we're going to take it all. Sorry, Kevin. Someone gave us a very rude tip that, about someone that I'm not going to read. MV Patrick gave us a tip. So an American forces uh, getting a degree and experience in some field to get a good job. Seeing that man that has no XP in politics is now leading the free world. Does that destroy this principle? Um, perhaps. I don't think you necessarily need experience in, to be president, though. I think that's the whole idea. We'll see if that's actually true or not, though. E. Halverson 7 gave us a tip and said, I can't agree that there was no backlash to liberal... I can't agree there was a backlash to liberalism and globalization when Trump is essentially running equal to Romney. Trump won because Democrats didn't turn out, not because of some shifter movement, perhaps, but I think the shifter movement uh, nullified votes and depressed the turnout, which I think is the same, right? Marie gave us a tip and said, I'm sure that Clinton lost a lot of votes also because she is a woman. Simple as this. Love and respect, don't hate, but don't bully. Show what is the best of us made of. Good luck, America. Thank you, Marie. Andrew Lee gave us a tip and said, on a lighter note, the presumptive 45th president of the United States took a stone cold stunner and is in the WWE Hall of Fame. That's what true. A time that, to be is, that is an upset. Now, he did a really shitty job of taking a stunner, which I, I don't respect. But then again, it's always one of those things you think it would be easy, you don't know. Uh, let's see. Auker gave us a tip and said, this wave of fear has to stop. We have to look at this as a sign to come together and fix what the system has become. I love and care about you all. We ha still have each other. No POTUS can take that. I agree. Tasman9293 gives tips. And something I feel is rarely brought up is how little of America votes every election year. Neither are yeah. supported by people. Yeah, there's a ton of apathy. I've been saying that for a long time. 50% of... The numbers aren't quite that high. I mean, we're talking about people that 
are very old. I mean, you're talking about not all of this 50% of people are capable of voting. Young or viral folks. Care. Right yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, there is a massive swath of people that just don't care. And that is, that is a bummer. And this is on them too. The Crazed Psycho gave us tip and said, hey guys, dumb request here. Can the three of you join in a group hug right now? Thanks. Kevin? Why are you, why are you moaning? What's wrong with you? I mean, I'm sad. Like, I, I, come here, come here. Let the hug cheer you up. Is the, it's, the, it's the day after. It's, know, we're upset I've now. Lost, I've lost elections. We'll I know. dust no, ourselves off. I know, I know, but like, you didn't... This dude who ran with such We'll dust ourselves off. Shit. We'll, we'll wallow in it today. We'll dust ourselves off. We'll make America great again tomorrow. <laughs> Not in the catchphrase hat way. And did anyone, was there an explanation of why there was a hat in a glass box on stage yesterday? Colin, I'm looking at you on this one. I saw it, but I don't understand it. Was it the first hat it must have they been ever a did? Yeah. Like, I did not understand why the hat I was I love if they just had it there box. like that for no reason, which would even be better. I was, I was waiting, maybe he was going to mention it in the speech. Chat, do you know? I mean, if they do, you're never going to see it because the chat is moving so fast today. Well, they're all excited about the hug. Uh, the trained chimp gave us a tip. Speaking of trained chimps, 11,000 people voted for Harambe. We can agree that governments worldwide don't work anymore, but us millennials just look around trying to find someone to fix it instead of taking responsibility. Are we lost? Uh, I think so. Um, the younger population is more liberal, uh, more progressive, more globalist. Um, so I think these things are going to change uh, regardless. Um, but there was a significant young vote for Trump as well. Not enough. I mean, if, if only young people voted, Clinton would have won. I saw that. If, uh, if only millennials, slot. it was like all blue except for like a few red at the, the top. The thing that's important about this, Greg, though, to me, is that you have to stay activated. The election's yep. over now. I'm into politics every day of the, of the year, uh, regardless of what's going on. Stay activated. Um, this is how elections are won or lost. This is how Obama built a coalition to win against Romney. It was because those people were already there and installed and ready to go. Now, they yeah. didn't vote the, the height that they did in 2008, but... Um, it's worth noting that um, if you're disenchanted and just give up and you want to leave America, I mean, you're, you, that's cowardly and stupid. Fight. You know what I mean? Like, fight for what you believe in. I fought for what I believed in for many years. I still do. You should fight for what you believe in, too. If you really believe this is wrong, then do something about it. Do something about it. It's two years before a third of the Senate's up. Two years before the entire House is up. If you want to do something about it, do something about it. Don't let that message be lost on you. GMOC4 says, coming to San Francisco for the Temple of the Dog Show. <laughs> it's the Temple of the Dog Show? Got NOPA and Hobson Hominy reservations. Really? For the same night? No. What am I missing? Also, thank you, Colin. USA will get through this okay. They will. I really believe that. I really believe in us. I really do. Retrobot Jr. gave a tip. Said, my wife and child are Wait, what's he missing? Where should he go eat? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm I'm hard water. Go get a drink at a... Uh... Hard water kind of sucks now. The, the, uh... I like hard water, and it's got seafood. So if you like seafood, there you go. Uh, Wayfair Tavern. Rick House. Rick House for drinks. Yeah. Uh, Bourbon and Branch for drinks. Wing Wings. Late wing wings. Some late wings. It's a great place in the hate called Olympic. A-L-E-M-B-I-C. That's good cocktails and food. Check that out as well. Although I hear they're falling off a little bit too, according to uh, Craig. Craig Baird on big old CB big dog old CB, joining big Oh, dog, yeah. shit. Retrobot Jr. says, my wife and child are minorities. The behavior against non-whites being normalized is terrifying. I feel for you, Colin, getting blamed for shit. You voted your conscience, and I respect that a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really personally offended by people attacking me. They're looking for someone to attack. You have to understand that the, the, the Twitter echo chamber is just ridiculous. Um, the hyperbole is ridiculous. And the groupthink is ridiculous. And I got so many support. I got tweets from people I haven't heard from and DMs from people I haven't heard, talked to in a long time and emails and people being like, right on, man. Like, this is like, you know, you haven't done anything wrong. You haven't said anything. Like, I was actually reading my tweets and I'm like, I didn't really say, I'm just making observations. I'm not like attacking anybody. Yeah. Sorry you lost. I know what it's like. I, you know, I know. Um, Buttercup gave us tips that she was involved in real scandals. Much of the media acted like she was a saint and didn't have huge flaws. People don't like being manipulated. The hyperbole is insane. Ignore the hate column. Um, I do agree with you that the, she has ma massive flaws that people want to ignore. This all goes back to Whitewater. This goes back to the first two years of the Clinton presidency when she was basically running amok. This goes to a lot of those things. People don't forget about these things. Is Kevin right also that there's uh, some hyperbolic attacks against her or just like that there's a wave of shit against her? Sure, but has, did she earn a lot of it? Yeah, she did. Benjamin Tart gave us tips that respect you, Colin. I appreciate you speaking your mind on Twitter regardless of everyone shitting on you in the process. Keep doing you, Bigel. I want to talk about this too because like I talked about this morning with you. I'm getting tweets every once in a while. I'm being like, oh, I'm so sorry you're getting so much hate. And I'm like, I'm reading my tweets and they're 95% fine. You know? Yeah. I just block people that are mean. Like, I don't block you if you disagree, but I block you if you're an asshole. Sure. Give a fuck about you if you want to be mean to me. Go be mean to someone else who gives a fuck about you. 
didn't vote, and that's my right. Is that as someone who has a secret has had secret clearance? You are trained in handling classified information. Hillary may have had the influence to get her own case thrown out. It doesn't mean she isn't a liar or a criminal. Okay. Blockmore gave Stibbs that being from Europe with a Twitter feed filled with American game journalists, actors, and other artists, you're the only one bringing up valid, reasonable, and not emotional arguments, Colin. Thank you. I know. You're welcome. David H89 gave Stibbs that, Colin, I thought the attacks towards you on Twitter last night were ridiculous. Personally, I didn't think either of the main choices were right. Third party was the only good choice, in my opinion. I agree. And that's why I voted for Gary Johnson, who might not be the most brilliant man in the world, but was the only honest person running. Honesty is really important to me. Tim Drake Red, or Drakeard, I don't know. He was said, I, like many Americans, am afraid of this after this election. Colin, Kevin, and Greg, what is the worst Trump could possibly do as president? What's the best case scenario? Are we all overreacting? I think we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. I think we are all overreacting. Yes. What's the worst that can happen? He suspends habeas corpus. He uh, suspends Congress. He installs 25 new justices of the Supreme Court illegally, like, like FDR tried to do. He... Uh, he does all these things and has complete totalitarian dictatorship rule. That's the worst thing that can happen. It's not going to happen. So, the power lays with Congress. That's what people don't understand. The power always is there. They kill or they support things. That's it. It doesn't work any other way. Marius gave us a tip and said, props to Kevin for standing up and voicing his opinion and engaging in discussion with Colin. The other guys are usually pretty quiet when it comes to those discussions. Love you all very much. I agree. I think Kevin is a good voice. I think Kevin's smart. Uh, I think Kevin knows what he's talking about. Um, he cares. He cares. I think he's engaged, um, and I and I and I think that he uh, knows how to argue and, and debate, which is a lost art for a lot of people that I completely and systematically dismantle. Not you. I'm just looking at you when I say it. Sure. Soul Porpoise gave us a tip. and said, "Hope this is time for everyone to gain some perspective. It's easy and cowardly to point fingers and call the other crazy. The other felt similarly in 08. Time to understand each other." Agreed. Will this be the wake up call, though? Probably not. The ominous anal. We need another 9/11. That'll be the only thing to unify the Very country. Nice. Uh, I'm, that is not a fucking joke. No, I know. There needs to be another, there has to be another national disaster. There has to be one, I mean, North Korea has to fire on us. And then we could all be like, wait a second, fuck that guy. But then we get back into the same thing we are, where we were with uh, Cheney, Rumsfeld, and Bush, right? Where we all believe him hook, line, and sneaker. And then later on, we're like, Ugh. we kind of regret that decision. Anal virus. Are you tip. sure it's not a null virus? It's anal. Okay. My apologies. We aren't the Weimar Republic. Trump isn't as popular as Julius Caesar. The problem is that Trump isn't the problem or solution. Trump is the symptom. If it isn't solved eventually, a Caesar will come. That's a very interesting and historically astute observation. I agree with you. We're not even remotely in the Weimar Republic. For people that are talking about what happened, I want to give people a little historical perspective of what happened in Nazi Germany or how not the Nazis came to power in 1933. The Weimar Republic was created uh, post-Versailles um, after basically the second, you know, it's basically the second Reich, the first Reich was in the 19th century. It's a complicated kind of thing. The, what basically happened was that this was a kind of toothless republic that was experiencing uh, reparations payments that collapsed their economy and caused hyperinflation. Um, they were hated by most of the people around them. They felt like they were stabbed in the back of Versailles. So there was this massive like uprising in Germany of, of people that were disaffected. Then the Great Depression happened in the late 20s and early 30s. Uh, Hitler won with like 32% of the vote in the, in the runoff. Uh, then uh, the Reichstag fire happened uh, a couple months later. Still unclear if it was started by communists or the Nazis started, we don't really know. Um, and he seized power over, like, we don't have this dire situation in the United States right now. We just don't. Like, so it's just not the same. So it just, what people say about that doesn't make any sense to me uh, from an historical perspective. Real quick, yeah, I'm Jordan says, for someone to wish for another 9-11 to fix things is absolutely disgusting. If you think that, you are part of the problem. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we're not going to come together as a country without a common enemy. I'm not wishing for it. I'm letting you know what's going to happen. Soul Porpoise gave us another tip. So I know I just said no pointing fingers, but I can't help but blame the state of the country on years and years of shaming the less the progressive ideology rather than educating and understanding. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I think that there's a massive backlash against progressivism and, and 21st century ideological goose-stepping liberalism. I mean, that's because that's what it's become. You can't say anything. You can't have a joke. You can't say no, no funny guy, no funny business, guys. I mean, people got mad at Electronic Arts for making World War One memes. 95% of the people that, that are, are mad about it don't even know what the fuck happened in World War I, don't know when the years was fought, don't know who the belligerents were. They're just mad to be mad. Th this is a backlash against that. You guys are hopefully a dying breed with that bullshit because it is destructive to polity. You saw it recently with that Razor thing. I think I don't think we were on the show together when that happened. I don't think we talked about it on the show, but did you see this? Where Razor, you know, Mac put out their thing where they don't have a, 
uh, SD, yeah, S to the D, yeah, suck, yeah. S my D. Right? You call yourself a pro, suck my D. Mm -hmm. And people flipped out about it. Razor took it out and apologized. And then the other side flipped out about them apologizing for it. Like, why are you apologizing for this? Who the fuck cares? It was a joke on Twitter. That's where we're at. I agree. I don't think they should have apologized personally. But no, I thought it was a funny joke. I mean, it's, I think it was a terrible joke, but like, why would you apologize? I don't think it's funny at all, but like, why would you apologize? I'm going to run around saying suck, suck, them, suck the D and kick the P or kick the P, suck the D. I don't know. If that's what upsets you during the day, if that's like your big thing that you're upset about during the day, that's why Hillary Clinton also lost. Just reminding you of that. Brantley986 gave us tips. Like, Colin, in case you don't touch on it before reading tips, can you talk a little bit about what this means for polling in the future? Is polling dead? You've already touched on it. Uh, hardy, thanks. Yeah, I told you the polls were going to be wrong. I told you. Now, the, and other people were telling you that as well. There were a lot of people that were, like Huffington Post was, a, some guy at Huffington Post got into a fight with Nate Silver over his 98% prediction, and Nate Silver was like, you're fucking nuts, and you don't know what you're talking about. That's like basically what he said. And the guys were going back and forth, and, and they were spiking the football and stuff like that, and I'm like, polling is scientific, completely scientific, and it should be a, right. The problem with polling is sampling, and the sampling is wrong. So they have to figure out how to get that. You said when you went to Missouri, you realized the, the jig might be up. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I actually realized that when I went to Washington State and drove from Seattle to the Gorge, which is like four hours through nowhere, Trump everywhere up there in a blue, deep blue state. So I'm like, I can only imagine what it's like in Missouri, in which he yeah. easily carried. Death to a Tron, I don't know, gave us tips. Minnesota Republican, I really appreciate this conversation. Over 4 million Americans voted for Gary Johnson, up 3 million from 2012. The signal was very clear, and I hope to see more third-party voters in 18 and 20. You're not going to see them in 18 because people don't vote third party in midterms. But in 20, you're going to see, a, I think, a powerful third party, especially if one of the candidates isn't savory to a massive group of people, which is possible. E. Halverson 7 gave us tips that Trump has pledged before to nominate justices in the mold of uh, Scalia, and he will get to nominate up to four Scalias. That would create a court that could very well overturn Roe versus Wade. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just think that's political suicide. I just don't, that's not a new thing. Roe versus Wade. It's not like a thing that was just put in there. I just... Being pro-life and then being against any sort of abortion, they're different. And you have to remember that he says these things, to, it's similar to your argument with Romney in 12. He's saying things to get elected. I don't really believe that this is an important issue to him. I just don't believe it. He was pro-choice like two years ago. It's really not clearly an, a, 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 an important issue to him. And frankly, it's just... And I, I mean this with all due respect. The, the, the right to choose... I believe in a woman's right to choose. I'm pro-choice. Why are we arguing about this? The country is falling apart. We have other things to worry about. I promise you. We have other things to worry about than to argue about these fucking mundane-ass social issues that have been settled since the 70s. Okay? Goodhound gave us a tip and said, Love you guys. Grew up outside of Flint, Michigan. When I see what happened in Flint, how can I not distrust government? Michigan has gotten its teeth kicked in. Cracked article is on point. I know. That's why it's not a huge surprise to see Michigan go. Heck, Dora gave tips that people love a vote until it goes against their opinion. When Brexit won, people started suggesting that old people shouldn't have a vote. My gran helped decode the Enigma machines in World War II. Just saying. Good point. One vote is one vote. The Enigma machines, for people that don't know, are the way the Nazis uh, encrypted their codes, their, mm. their, their communications with each other. And we cracked Enigma, and then they didn't know for a really long time, and it was funny. Uh, Lowly Knight gave us a tip and said, Colin, I just want to say thank you. I love hearing you talk about politics. You said a while ago that you thought a lot of Trump supporters are staying quiet. Turns out it was right. I know. I mean, it was obvious. The, the question was how many? It was way bigger than I even thought. Mm. Coley's 33 gave us a tip and said, I'm a 31-year-old small business owner, the savvy coconut headbands. I live in Georgia and voted for Trump strictly for the economy. Even in my circle of friends, Trump was the silent majority. Joan, who gave us a tip, said, greetings from Finland. Respect all your opinions. Love, lots of love. Keep up the good work and be okay, okay? We'll be fine. The ghost one gave us a tip and said, I'm with Greg. I couldn't sleep last night because of how angry I was. I'm angry to see what, ev what this is doing to everyone. The social climate is disturbing. Pop out the crystal bassoon. And love everyone. Legal! Yep, we legalize it in California, Massachusetts, etc. So I can start eating it and using suicide holes whenever I want? Yep, you can start eating it and use suicide holes. Josh, 2018 is when I got away from That's for what legal, I heard. I heard, puff. I heard that, well, I think it's the criminal, I think it's basically passed. I don't think you're getting arrested for it now. Now that needs to be an apparatus created that can sell it. Gotcha. I mean, it already is a medical apparatus that you know many people use in, in the state. So. As, as of right now, you're allowed to have up to an ounce, right? Uh, yeah, if you have a card, I think you can have you can buy up to I think two ounces a day. I thought I heard on the news, which is like, an insane amount of weed, by the way. If you don't if you don't smoke weed, because it passed, you can have an ounce on you. Oh, okay, right great. Now that's what I I'm heard. just going to carry I around an ounce just because. Then I guess, just because I can. Because America. Uh, let's see. Josh Hull gave us a tip. 
So people vote for someone who inspires them, not for someone who, so the other does not win. People need to be inspired. Just be, to be clear, I'm against Trump, but he inspires the, the squirrels of the U.S.? I don't know what that means. Soup Bones gave us tips that this is for Colin, for being the smartest man in the room. That's very nice. Thank you. Kevin takes issue with it, I think. Anonymous gave us tips that Kevin, you and Tim made a bad joke about sick dying children on a charity stream for sick dying children. Nobody will call you a bad person for it. Consider that when you judge people for their words. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're talking about. I How dare you, sir? They're talking about the um, the game we were playing, Quidditch. Or one of the things was like, what do you ah. give a bad, like a sick kid, and like as a shitty gift. Or I can't remember what it was. I I said. You don't have to explain the joke. You're allowed to joke about whatever you want. It was a joke. It wasn't something I believed in. DJ Death Cool gave us tips. Said, "Hey, Colin, just wondering if you've done any research on DAPL and what your opinions on it may be. Politically heated show today. I hope you guys hug it out and make it up. I don't know." So I can't speak to it. Unless that's an acronym for something I know, but I don't know that acronym. The Donkey Kong gave us a tip, uh, but it is below the $5 threshold. So we will not read it. The Final Death gave us a tip. Said, hey guys, in the wake of all the dejection and despair people are feeling today, I gotta say, I can't wait for Stone to game over Greg. I love all you. Keep doing what you do. Oh, can't wait either. Yeah, we'll, great. We're, we're gonna get there soon enough. Shop Mill gave us a tip. Said, hey guys, David Wong wrote another great blog post. Highly recommended. So that, that's the guy that wrote the cracked article about the... Um, Michigan? No, the, well, about that I read on the show. And uh, he wrote another one, so you guys can check that out if you want. The Hardcore gave tips that Trump is a huge middle finger to the system as a whole. Everybody needs to see it for what it is. I agree. Superfly MK gave tips that, hey guys, I've enjoyed how Trump winning and Brexit happening has showed how globalism, globalization has failed to protect manufacturing industries in USA and UK. Can this lead to a return of nationalism? It's possible, and I think that that's people's fear. Um, nationalism weaponized is very dangerous. Nationalism by itself um, could just be interpreted as pride. So it's hard. It's a, it's a razor's edge kind of thing. Um, that said, I'm glad NAFTA is going to go away. I'm glad that uh, trade deals are going to be reconfigured to be more beneficial to us and our workers who have been decimated by cheap labor from third world countries. So that is a major interesting thing and that's something I agree with Trump about. I think, I, I actually don't, I mean I've said it before, it is very anti-Republican, but I don't believe in free trade. Like I don't. I think you should have to pay the price to import and export goods. I don't, I don't understand because, because Free trade assumes that everyone lives at the same standard, with the same monetary system, with the same amount of money, and it's just not the way it works. If you can pay uh, your employees a fraction of what they get paid here to make the same thing, then free trade doesn't benefit the country that imports those goods. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand that any argument to the contrary. DJ Deathcool says a question for Kevin. He seems upset with left voters who didn't vote for Hillary. I want to know his opinion on Hillary's foreign policy record and her history with war. She is very hawkish. How do you, you know, she wants to do a no, she wanted to do a no-fly zone, with, which would have maybe even caused a war with Russia. So, what, what do you think of that, that Kevin? Because I don't necessarily disagree with some of what she was saying. But. I mean, the necessity, not necessity, but the desire to have a no-fly zone was to save people. Like, innocent people were getting bombed by Russian planes. A lot of them. I mean, it was tragic. We all saw the videos. Kids being pulled out covered in blood. But are we? Are, but the question is, I'm not saying she's necessarily mm -hmm. wrong. The question is, are we ready to do what's necessary then? Because we're going to be fighting a massive country in a proxy war. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, so I, think that I, that's I, a I lot. don't think it would have escalated at that point. I don't think. I mean, who knows? The Russians are crazy, so <laughs> maybe. Um, but like, yeah, you have to back up the shit you say. The red line thing that happened to Obama was fucking tragic as shit. Don't make statements that you can't. You know. Back up. And I think that, yeah, I mean, if that had gone that way, I'm sure that would have, talks would have escalated, but I don't think that it would have gone to war. So, yeah, that's it. I think, um, I think flashpoints happen very suddenly, and you never know. If the America shot down a Russian fighter jet, look at it the other way. If, we, if there was a no-fly zone established and the Russians f sat down an American fighter jet, I would be fucking pissed. Yeah. Shot down that Egyptian... Oh, no, the Russians are getting away with all sorts of things. The Russians got away with annexing a piece of land in the 21st century. So, very Nazi move, since we're talking about Nazis there. Uh, Mattman94 gave tips that I'd like to know your thoughts on Kaepernick taking a knee and speaking out against all these injustices going on, but then refusing to vote. I personally think it makes him a huge hypocrite. I, I respect Colin Kaepernick's right to, to do what he wants. I think Colin Kaepernick is a useful idiot. Like, I think he's the. I think Colin Kaepernick is the epitome of a useful idiot, um, and uh, he has the right to feel he wants. So I think the things that some of the things he's talking about are very true. 
Um, I just don't think he has any idea what he's talking about. I think it's clear that he learned about these things very recently. He has no background in these issues, and um, he has a lot of educating to do um, for himself and a lot of reading to do. Because if you don't vote, um, you have no right to complain. Just to let that be known. Lionel, with a bunch of words after it, or letters, says, I get so much shit for not voting in the small redneck town that I live in. I do not trust either, so I sat out this one. The public and their intolerance towards others' views just kill me. Okay. V. Seamus gave us tips. And my thing is that, at the very best, Trump voters are okay with the president openly saying things that can be seen as bigoted, misogynistic, xenophobic, and racist. I don't understand how that is okay. Uh, to, to your point, um, Bill Clinton is a massive misogynist. Uh, you know, basically abused women, took advantage of an intern. So in terms of certain things, it goes both ways, right? Everyone was okay with Bill Clinton doing that kind of stuff. Then Bill Clinton lied to everyone about it. Bill Clinton paid Paula Jones off to the tune of almost a million dollars not to talk about what happened with her. So there has to be some consistency there. That said, I didn't hear many xenophobic or bigoted things coming out of Bill Clinton's mouth. So I, I agree with you two-thirds of the way. Door 7 gave Stippus that I am saddened by the results, but I believe in the institutions of our country. Just as Democrats are not actually coming out for, coming for our guns, the hyperbole and actions of Trump, Trump publicans will have limits. I agree. Asian Boy Wonder gave Stippus that too bad that the Democrats hate the filibuster so much. Too bad their principles will keep them from stopping the, sen uh, from stopping the Senate. That is funny. Um, the, the Democrats do control enough seats to filibuster everything. And they got on the Republicans' case for doing that, and we'll see if they can withstand doing it now. Yeah, not do it themselves. Um, I think that's their right to do it. Timbo James gives Stibbs that there were two hats in a glass because it was supposed to be a symbol of the Trump movement, or whatever they want to call it. Keep doing your own thing, fellas, because I love two it. Two hats in a glass. Okay. We're almost there, Greg. Walk and talk and Stephen Hawking gives tip. Said, I am a, I'm as liberal and PC as they come. I was all set to cast a, a ballot for Hill Dog. But then Trump said his two magic words Tuesday night. Tom and Brady. My vote was swayed. All hair, hail Fuhrer Trump. I think he's referring to Tom Brady. Apparently, but apparently not now. Yeah. Giselle said no. And, uh, and although I, I believe, I mean, they're friends. I don't, I don't, and apparently there was a Make America Great Again hat in his locker at some point. And, I, I, um, and Belichick obviously supported him as well. Colin and Greg 2020 gave us tips. Said, looking forward to walking down the street without having to hear about the election anymore. Really want to put this behind us. Regardless of who you voted for, stay strong, best friends. Agreed. Hide indoors gave us tips. Said, this tip goes out to Kevin. I appreciate how you stand up for your beliefs. Virtual hugs from me to you, big Kev dog. It's been a rough day. DT gave us tips. Said, do you guys think we should? He should still release his tax records. I feel that by not releasing them, he is not being held accountable, which is one of the current problems of politics. So nothing changes. Surprised he got away with that, but there's no reason for him to do that now. 3G gave tips at hey, a Hall of Presidents exhibit at Disneyland. It'll be interesting going forward. Thanks <laughs> for the insight, Colin. Do you? I will. Anonymous gave tips at what are your thoughts on global politics after this election with the French presidential election coming early next year and people believing the right wing will win there too. So you're talking about, I think, Marie, Marie Le Pen or whatever the hell her name is, who's a right wing nationalist in France who is very powerful there right now. Uh, I was reading something yesterday where she's not expected to get through the final round of voting, but um, it's possible. I mean, I wouldn't, and she wants out of the EU too. If France leaves the EU, it's over. The EU's done. Uh, Dante Disco Inferno gave us a tip and said, what do you think Trump's win means for Obama's legacy? While some are saying it is a complete repudiation, I still say it's a more rejection of Clintonism rather than Obamaism. Obama at 56% approval. Uh, I agree with you. Obama's very popular right now. We're almost there. No more tips, please. Desro gave us a tip and said, live in the Rust Belt, Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tri-State. And people here are surprised by these results and don't understand. The way people are treating others over this is savage. Sugar King gave us a tip and said, thoughts on the Dakota Access Pipeline police brutality. I've been reading a little bit about this. This has to do with Native Americans. I don't have enough information about it. I don't quite understand the situation enough to have a comment. Us a dud or Ash dud, I don't know, 77 gave us a tip. Said, if Trump were a PlayStation game, what would he be? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> Death to Norm gave Stipsy Colin, you are literally the fucking best. I appreciate what you do more than you could ever know, and I want to thank you for brightening my day the three or four times a week you're on your own show. You're welcome. Bounty gave us tips. Said, hey, Colin, I was curious to why exactly you think Bernie would have lost to Trump as well and worse than Hillary. Um, Gallup shows that 50% of Americans would vote for a socialist under no circumstances. So even assume that the number is really 45. He starts with 55% of the vote. You can't win. You can't win when you're starting with 55% of the voter pool. Um, people have an aversion to socialism in the United States. Um, he would have gotten the young vote. He would have gotten the Democratic vote. He would have gotten the liberal and progressive vote. But there is a massive swath. Trump won because of independence, and he would have won those independents too. Um, people don't want the government in their business in the United States. And people that overseas that don't understand that just don't understand America, and that's fine. But we have a distrust of big government. We don't want them in our lives. And that's the thing that's shared on both sides of the aisle. It's really only the far left that doesn't believe that. Um, DJ Deathcool says, DAPL says for the Dakota Access Pipeline is an extremely complex issue between native tribes, oil companies, the state of North Dakota, and the federal government. I think you'll find it fascinating. Now I know what you're talking about. We just talked about it before. I don't have enough information. Um, 
The Vegas Bomb gave us a tip. Said you and I voted for different third parties, but I was encouraged by Johnson's turnout. What is your short response to all the people shaming me for not voting Clinton? Because I'm tired of doing it. Uh, the response is easy. Your candidate should have been better, and then maybe he would have voted for him or her. Um, people are allowed to vote for whoever they want because there are two choices. Because you want someone to cast a vote doesn't mean they have to do that. They don't owe you anything. And this isn't a Ralph Nader in 2000 situation. And if people believe that, then they're fucking wrong. That's all there is to it. Nader was all Gore votes. Johnson was not all or even mostly Clinton votes. Pe that is lost on people. I think a lot of people that voted for Johnson just wouldn't have voted. So just tell them to go fuck off. You voted your conscience. You voted for your candidate. Maddie gave Stipp said, Trump is supposed to be good for business, but he's in torrid love affair with China and has a history of cheating small businesses. How is he going to be good for American businesses? I don't know. I didn't vote for him. Hey man, living gives tips and greetings from Canada. Great discussion, and thanks uh, you guys for always being honest. I hope that this does not hamper relations with Canada too much, as Trudeau and Trump differ on almost every point. I, I, it won't. Everything's gonna be fine. I really believe that. Claude Jack gave us a tip and said, "For me, the worry is the hateful and now empowered. We saw a 41% increase in hate crime in the UK post Brexit. Morality is being degraded by hateful things said on a world stage going unchecked. It's possible, and I'm sorry about what's going on in the UK. I don't, I don't expect the rise to, uh, here to be that significant, but it could be. Um, there is no room for hate, tr hateful rhetoric." Uh, and not understanding other people and their experiences. At the same time, uh, both sides need to understand that. Final tip. It's real. It's the final tip. <laughs> it says, Drew Dutka. Hey, guys, I live in Manitoba, Canada. Colin, just wondering what you think Trump's win will mean for Canada, if anything. Thanks. We just talked about that. I don't think it means anything for Canada. Um, maybe it means that we actually get the pipeline done from Saskatchewan down here so we can make lots of money in the Gulf of Mexico, but we'll see what happens. Um, Greg, uh, yeah. do you want to play this like a normal no. show? Should we just get out of here? No, I mean, we'll do subs. But I don't think we should do We'll put two gifts in or two uh, prizes in the prize pack tomorrow and promote our subs and all that shit tomorrow. But this is a different kind of show. Uh, people who did sub during the show, I guess. And so many of you have that. We only have it from 11.33 on. Uh, the S. Will Merchant. Hillary's campaign ignored Wisconsin and Michigan and Trump didn't. This loss is on her arrogance. Lockmort. The Jonesy Man. P uh, oh, it's player, but no A. Two. Uh, Daquiliath. Don't really know what to say today. Just keep being amazing, you guys. Smiley face. Stargazer. October's last. Thanks for everything you guys do. Ned Lloyd. Music SC. Feel better, Kev. Shane Bold. Uh. Big Tony Style. Our country is resilient. We will be fine. Haber0019. I wish we could just all be seen as individuals with beliefs and not groups with blanket opinions. That'd be nice. IBF Seanster. Be safe and make good choices. Much love. Uh, Amit San, keep up the great work, guys. DNB Beats, Pink Pink 78, Hot Dog the Vendor, Irving B24, PSN 7, but it's like 7 with an I in it, but that's weird. Z Bateman 14, SFG 916, Sir Jeffington 91, X Wing V Man X, take my free Amazon money. Glad to support you guys with no cost to me. Winky face. Uh, simply AZN93. Bosch B. Colin, love your knowledge. Wish I had more. Uh, 1337 A T R E Y U. Gazer Pazer Pfeld. Sorry, I haven't been in the chat lately. Can't watch during work, but I'm here with you today. Par G Nui. Colin Cronin. Jolly Hornist. Grizzly Bear. Woo. B. Jed War 2. CTB underscore Apollo. Exclusive Wallaby. Or elusive Wallaby. I apologize. A Baker's Dozen? Question mark? Da two one one nine five ha k m e z darko blue wind zero four murray e k cubby fan nineteen eighty three clearly azen uh, geeks and gaming news thanks for the amazing year and a half here's to more lucid dream ja sense senseless thing uh, wolf fox ten j c colin twenty twenty that p r guy quent is S Y K O Monkey 54 L Men Trill A hey, Griffin Bruce uh, Harsh Kane K Petchevek Greg quoting Thomas Jefferson here quote The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants Yeah not maybe the appropriate quote for right now Pilot <laughs> CX7 But that is a quote from Jefferson <laughs> Ad Rock underscore 88 you are all loved and appreciated. Thank you for supporting us by subscribing to us on Twitch. Also worth pointing out that tomorrow, I'm making good on the Extra Life Titanfall stream directly after Colin and Greg Live at 12.30. Lindsay was saying earlier that there are still spots open if you want to join up. So go to kindoffunny.com slash titanfall2, I believe. But they will put that in the chat, I'm sure, and make it one way or the other. 
Awesome. All right. Um, closing thoughts, Kevin. Let's all come together. This decision was made. That's it. Greg? Yeah, man. We got a president. Let's move forward. Let's try to fix this. Let's not forget this. Don't forget this next time an election comes around if you're mad. Don't glaze over and not care about politics and not pay attention to anything. Uh, my closing thought, uh, I think the most salient thing to say is to stay engaged. Um, and to not be afraid. I feel like... FDR said um, when we were going to go to war with Japan, uh, the famous quote, uh, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Um, I do really believe that. I understand that on the ground it seems like things are going to be bad for some people or some groups of people. I really believe in the goodness of American citizens to not let certain things happen. And I think the inexorable march towards gay rights, towards the inclusion and integration of minorities, um, for a, a bunch of things that we have and hold dear in the United States as a freedom-loving people, um, I think that they continue to be inexorable. I think that it would be political suicide for the Republicans to go after those people. This is not why the Republicans voted for this man, I don't think, and these, people, and these independents especially voted for him. And uh, so I, I, I offer uh, one of the few, it seems like, people that are, that are hopeful that will come through this fine. Am I gonna be wrong? Perhaps. But let's be optimistic. Let's, um, and this was the same spiel I was gonna give if, when I assumed Clinton was gonna win. Let's be optimistic, move forward, and see what happens before we jump to any conclusions. Um, and let's also understand why this happened. And it happened for very specific reasons. Um, so stay engaged, keep talking. Politics are important. You have a right to vote for who you want to vote. You have a right to feel the way you want to feel. I wish you all the very best. We'll see you tomorrow for a conventional episode of Colin and Greg Live tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We'll see a fourth of you then. Goodbye.